So I got nearly 400 comments on my recent LinkedIn post about HeyGen Avatar AI automation. Now these are not just random commenters, but they are actually from people who are interested in AI automation. Now a common business strategy that businesses will do is called lead generation, which is to identify these commenters, get them more details about them, and send them a personalized message about your product or services. And today I would like to show you a fully automated LinkedIn lead generation system that I've built and it's perfect if you're doing LinkedIn marketing. So this system runs on autopilot with a schedule trigger. And every time it runs, it will grab the post URLs that I save from the Google Sheet, send them to a tool called Appify to extract all the profile URLs from the commenters, as well as all the other information like education, experience, languages, and more. And eventually just kind of exporting all these information back to a Google Sheet so that we have like a lot of leads for personalized outreach later. As usual, I'll be sharing this template for free, so you can actually grab this template together with the tutorial guide from my free school community, which is linked in the video description below. And just a real quick plug for AI Business Lab Pro, we just launched our Pro Tier membership, which will grant you a bunch of AI learning resources, including two NAN courses from beginning to advanced, 80 plus created AI tools, as well as 120 plus ready to use AI automation templates. And just a quick look on the content inside, I will be introducing what is NEN, how it works, some of the important notes in NEN, as well as some core networking concepts so that you really get all the foundation knowledge. And in the advanced course, I'll be talking about AI agents deeply, as well as some of the important concepts like memory, MCP servers, rack and vector databases, as well as modular NEN workflow design. Now in the AI resources world, I created a lot of AI tools in different categories like coding, AI infrastructure designing, prompt engineering resources and different references, as well as more than 120 plus created automation templates. So you can actually do plug and play and use that in your workflow. And more importantly, we have two office hours every week. So you have time to chat with me and discuss any technical issues you might be facing or just to discuss any business automation strategies. And finally, many of you who are watching this video have not subscribed yet. So if you do like this video, please like and subscribe and it will really help the growth of this channel so that we can keep delivering more high quality content like this. All right, so let's head back to our NN workflow. What I'm going to do next is to highlight some of the important notes here that you need to set up credentials for. So you can actually just import this template and use it in NAN. And secondly, I'll be talking about some important concepts when using this system, including the Google Sheets node, how to use Appify's HTTP request, some code blocks that I've set up here, as well as how to use looping so that we can actually split the scraping in batches for performance reason. And by the end of the video, I also talk about the cost of running this automation, as well as some other ways you can further customize it to suit your different needs. Once you have downloaded the template, we can now head to a blank canvas and click on the three dots here and import from file. And you can just pick the JSON file you downloaded from the community. And now here, you will notice a few red arrow symbols here. And these are the nodes that we need to set credentials for. So we need to set up credentials for Google Sheet as well as the Appify Scraper HTTP request node. So let's click on the Google Sheet node. What you can do here is that if you're using any end cloud, you can easily just set up the credentials by signing in with your Google account. So what you can do is just to sign in with Google and pick the account that you'll be using, like so. And eventually it will set connections successfully and you get connected to your Google account. And the next step we'll be doing is actually to use the Google Sheet template that I've compiled for you. So you can actually click this link in the setup guide. And in the template, I have two columns here. One is post URLs, which will be pasting some of the post URLs we copied from LinkedIn. And the second one is a status column, which we'll use to identify which post URLs need to processing. Now, the first one we need to do is to make a copy of this and rename this to a suitable name. So we just want to make a copy with a different name. And this will be the editable Google Sheet that we're using in the new workflow. So heading back to the workflow, if you click on this node, now we can actually refresh this document list and pick the one that we just used. And we're just going to pick the correct sheet name here to be post and set a filter and set the column to be status and set the value to be written. So now you have this Google Sheet node ready. And if you continue with the setup guide, we also have some additional Google Sheet node at the end of the workflow to set up. So let me just kind of go through them really quickly. So in the at leads node, again, you will pick the document that you have just copied and then choose this one to be least and set the mapping column node to map automatically. And that's done. And then in the prepare node, you just need to do very similar thing as you've done for the first step. 
And this is just kind of grabbing all the row numbers so we can actually mark the status when the workflow is completed. So for this one, you just need to pick the name to be the correct document and everything should be already set up. And the second credentials that we need to set up is the Appify API key. So if you click on this HTTP node, we are actually missing the header off for this scrape comments node. And this is essential if you're using Appify's API to call the scrape group. So what we can do here is to create a new credentials and name this to be Appified. And we just kind of grab the name and value from Appified's console right now. Now, before we head to the Appified's API console and grab our API key, just want to do a real quick introduction of the tool. So if you go to Appify.com, you'll be landed to the landing page. And as the landing page kind of shows you, it has a lot of built-in scrapers for different common tools that we'll be using, including TikTok scraper, Google Maps scraper, Instagram, etc. So you can actually just really quickly spin up a scraper and extract the information from those common websites. And if you look at the pricing, uh, we'll be using a free trial, which we have $5 to actually do a LinkedIn scraping. And it's more than enough if you're just kind of testing the workflow. And now let's go ahead and click on this go to console button, which will bring you to the home tab of the Appify console. And what you can do next is to click on the settings tab here and click on API integrations. And this is where your API key is located in. So you can just do a copy from here and then going back to the new workflow. So we can set the name to be authorization. And then for the value, we need to do expression and type in bearer and just paste this key in the field. And just a reminder not to share this key with anyone because it's your secret key. And for, for my case, I'll just remove this after the tutorial. So you can click save. And then now your credentials to be set up and the scraper will be running. And then we can also do a sanity check of the other nodes. So we can make sure that the other scraper nodes are using the correct header off. So this one and this one. Okay, so now all the credentials are set up and there's just one final step we need to do before we execute this workflow. And that is data preparation. So Heading back to the Google Sheet, what we need to do is actually to get some post URLs to get the scraper running. So if you already have some posts that you're interested in scraping, like my own personal post, what you can do is to click on the three dots of the post and click copy link to post and just paste this URL in the Google Sheet item. And the scraper also works for company page posts or even other accounts uh, that are specific in your niche. So you can do the same thing with this company post and just kind of copy link to post and paste it in here. Now, just to note that each scrape uh, for this workflow only works maximum 100 post URLs. So you can only do 100 post URL at a time. So what you can do here is to limit the number of URLs that you paste in here, or just mark the status to be completed for some of them so that you don't exceed the limit. And if you're curious about how this scraping actually works and also wonder different customization and configurations that you can set, you can go to the Appify store and search for LinkedIn, and there's a bunch of LinkedIn scrapers available. And the first scraper that we'll be using is this LinkedIn post comments replies and engagement scraper. And you can actually see different input configurations here. So you can input post URLs or even IDs. And it's important to note that, again, as I mentioned, it's multiple LinkedIn posts up to 100 in a single run. And you'll be also seeing different run executions that you have done in the past if you've already done it, as well as how much money is actually spent in each of the runs. And then the second scraper they'll be using is this LinkedIn profile details batch scraper. So this step is done after we extracted the profile URLs from the commenters. So you can see that in the input field here, there is profile usernames or URL here, which will be passing the previous scraped URLs to the scraper. And then very similarly, you can also see different run history here, as well as how much money we spend for each of the run. And just to find a quick tip, you can actually click on this API drop down here and click on API endpoints. It just kind of shows you a documentation of different endpoints available for this scraper. And if you click on the API reference, it will also shows you a very detailed configurations of all the APIs that we're using in the NEN workflow. So feel free to check this out and I've included all the links in my community guide. Every setup is completed now. So we can actually turn the workflow to be active. So it just kind of automatically executes every day at 10 a.m. and just scrape all the profiles from the LinkedIn post URL that you have supplied. But if we kind of want to just test this workflow, you can turn it back to inactive and click on execute workflow and just see how the data flow actually goes and all the API interactions. So here I have an execution history that is successfully run and I decided to go through each node one by one and explain some of the important NEN concepts. So the first note here, we have the schedule trigger, which is very simple. We just configure it to be every day at 10 a.m. so that we trigger this workflow. And then the second note is the get post URL Google Sheet note. 
So we'll be using the get rows operation from the document that we've specified and filter the ready columns. And eventually you'll get the output as a table, which has the post URLs and the status. And then we're just kind of quickly passing this data to an aggregate node so that we have the post URLs in a single array so that we can pass this array to the scraper HTTP request. And then in this scrape comments, so we'll be using a post method so that we trigger this endpoint. And if you look at the path here, this is actually the scraper name that I've just showed you early in this video. We'll be using LinkedIn post comments, replies, engagement scraper. And we'll be using this run sync get data set items, which kind of just run this HTTP request in synchronized manner and get back the results when the execution is finished. So just kind of going through the send body wheel quickly, we'll be passing a parameters that is called post IDs and just kind of filter them so that we don't send empty elements in the array. And this page number, sort order and limit are just kind of some metadata. So we kind of decided how much is the limit of each scraper will do. So just use the highest limit, which is the 100 comments per scrape. And this page number is something related to pagination that will be explained um, right after. So just kind of going back to the next node, once we have all the results here, then we actually got back all the comments with the profile URLs, and you can see that in the JSON format as well. And here is a very important branching conditional node that I want to explain. So if we click on this Eve node that is called have more comments and scroll to the bottom of this schema um, struct, you can see that the script actually returns what is the total comments that is in the request. So these total comments uh, in the two posts combined has 338, which is exceeding the limit of each one. So we actually need to use this number and check if it is greater than 100. If it is the case, then we need to run more scraper nodes to extract the remaining comments. Now, if it is less than 100, we can just go to the profile step directly and scrape all the profiles. And if we go back to the canvas, and that is exactly what the branching condition looks like. So if it is true, more than 100 comments, we'll do a loop part here that kind of just grab the remaining comments. And if not, then we'll go to the profile step. Now, let me explain how this looping step works. So the first block I have here is called create page numbers, which is a code block. It looks very scary, but what it really does under the hood is to divide the total comments by the 100, so we get exactly how much times we need to run the scraper additionally for. So this is also known as pagination in technical terms, is to get the number of pages. So each page has 100 as a limit, so essentially the number of pages equals to the number of runs that we need to get. But anyway, with this code block, we'll be able to get an array with the current page number as the item. So we have two, three, four. We have second, third, and fourth page that we need to execute for in order to get all the comments. So that's why the next step is to split that out so that we'll get the numbers in the array. And then we'll use a loop node, which will kind of loop through each item. So we'll loop through two, three, four as the input. And then in each of the loop, we'll just call the HTTP request one by one. And then we aggregate all the results when the loop is finished. So if you look at the scrape comments loop node here, we use the exact same post URL, exact same credentials with exactly same post IDs. But the only difference is to pass in a different page number based on the item in each loop. So in the final loop here, you can see that the current page become four. And then we just kind of get back the items in each of the run, uh, in each of the loop. So the first one, we have the first uh, remaining 100 comments. The second one, we have one comments. The third one, we have 39 comments. So these are just like the comments returned by every page. And then you can see that in the next item here, again, I kind of aggregate them into a single array. And eventually when the loop is done, we'll just do a merge loop comments node, which will merge all the lists that are from the array, uh, I mean, from the loop, and also like setting the field to be items and just kind of grabbing also the comments from the very first one in the workflow and outputting all the items in a single list. So at the end, we have the comments from the first run and also the comments from the looped run and getting all the comments here. Right, so now we have all the comments ready. Now it's time to actually extract the profile details. So in the third steps, once we pass in all the 300 plus comments here, We'll go through another code blocks, which is to extract the unique profiles. Now, this step is important because some of the comments may be from the same person or if they have commented multiple times. So that's why we need to run a code block just to use some data structure 
to extract the number of unique comments and their profile URLs. So as you can see here, the numbers just kind of like drops from 300 plus to around 200 here. And also importantly, we have all the profile URLs and the pictures and different information we can pass into the next scraper. So as you can see here, very similar to how I did for the loop comments part, I will split them into different batches. So this time, each batch will have 50 profile URLs. The reason for choosing 50 is because uh, after some trial and errors, I just find this number to be perfect, not to hit the time limit for each of the API requests. But you can also free to choose any numbers for your customization needs. Now, again, we'll do a split out batches so that we have the URLs in a single list of array to be passed into the URLs. And again, we'll do a loop over profiles and this time in the scrape profiles node, I'll use a different post URLs here, which is called LinkedIn profile batch scraper. And then very similarly, we use post request and this run get data sync items. We use the Appify header off credentials. And this time we used the usernames as the body parameters. As you can see, I just dragged this batches to be, you know, the audit profile URLs to be the value and after each of the runs. So I actually run it six times to get all the 288 profiles. And in each of the runs, it just returned me basic information for that person, experience, education, certificates, languages, and more. Now, once we merge all the profiles, similarly as what we have done for the comments, we'll do another code block just to kind of clean this data a little bit up for exporting to our Google Sheet. So now we have a nicely formatted version with all the prefixes here and just a very nice tabular format that is suitable for Google Sheet. And then here in the final three nodes here, I have this at leads node, which is using the append row operation and choosing the same document that we just copied. But this time we use a different sheet label uh, to be leads, which if you look back at the Google Sheet is actually the second sheet that we can paste the content for. So now, we also let Google Sheet to format the cell and let any end to decide which column to map. And it's just kind of intelligently exported everything to the Google Sheet. And eventually, we just want to mark this status to be completed for the post URLs that we're processed. So we get back the row numbers from the get rows Google Sheet. And then in the final step, we'll update the values using the row numbers as a filter. Uh, for the status to be completed. So now here, if I go back to post, you can see that all the post URLs that I pass in to the scraper has now been marked successfully completed. So that's the demonstration of the entire workflow. And in this tutorial, you'll learn about how to use Google Sheets node to get information such as post URLs. You learn about the Appify scraper so that you can scrape commenters and also the profile details. You also learn about how to use code blocks as well as important concept about looping so that you can do performance optimization and split APIs in batches. And finally, you also learn about how to export data back to a Google Sheet for further processing. Now, just kind of quickly going through the cost of running this automation. Now, you can see in the first scraper that we're using, it says $5 per 1,000 results. So that means every 1,000 comments that you scrape, you pay $5. And you can see actually detailed usage of how many credits you have used in each of the app to run. So in most of the time, it's going to be minimal. So I think it's pretty cost effective for our use cases. And for the profile one, it's actually pretty generous. So it is $5 per 1,000 profiles. And talking about further customization from this workflow. So once you extracted all the leads information from this, you can actually pass this information further to an AI agent so that you can draft personalized messages depending on your product or your service niche. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details here, but feel free to also join our community so that you can discuss different projects ideas with us. And now another idea is also to connect with additional tools such as Phantom Buster. So you can actually engage with the leads by sending them personalized DMs, connect messages and things like that based on the personalized message you crafted with the AI agent. So that's it for today. And if you want to further level up your AI automations or AI agent skills, consider joining AI Builder Start Pro, which you'll get a structured learning path for learning all these kind of amazing things and also join a growing community so that we can hop on this amazing AI learning journey together. Thank you for watching.